And aren't those white-faced owls truly marvellous? I think definitely a new one for several of you that have been diligently keeping track of the various birds on your bird list. Unfortunately for us guys, this sighting is in demand. So at some point we are going to have to leave to make space for the other vehicles. So we're going to absolutely make the most of the time that we have for now. We've still got some time, no rush. But we will actually have to give some space at some point. Hello, you. Oh. So cute. Look at your face. <laughs> Little niggly creatures. Constant twitching. What's that? What's going on? The fly is driving you crazy. <laughs> It's so human in a way. <laughs> oh no, and now you itchy. Shame, little one. Definitely a bit more scruffy looking than the Nkuguma cubs. And is clearly very itchy. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Now, of course, we are enjoying some lovely time spent with our sticks and our Unkuhuma cubs. We seem to have lions coming out, lion cubs coming out of our ears, as Brent described it. Eight for the Unkuhumas and eight for the sticks. Uh, Cecilia, yes, it is the case that lion cubs generally have a roughly 50% survival rate past their first year. Sometimes in certain areas it's even lower than that, particularly where there's a high concentration of lions, which could apply to the Sabi Sands as well. The real difficulty with lion cub mortality, and I was trying to explain this one of the previous drives, the real difficulty with talking about statistics on lion mortality if the Birmingham boys stay in control of this area, then most of these cubs are going to survive. If they lose control of a territory, then immediately all of the cubs will be killed. So you can imagine how that skews statistics, because if you sit as a, as a biologist and average out the rough survival rate of cubs, it's going to be severely skewed every time there is a pride takeover, because every time there is a takeover by males, they kill every cub in the vicinity, which automatically raises the chances of being killed. So provided the Birmingham boys stay dominant in this area, provided they don't get injured in some way, chances are they're going to have a slightly higher success rate or survival rate than that. I think they will anyway. But it all depends upon whether or not the Birmingham boys manage to stay in power for those critical first few months. Because of course when I started working here, last year the sticks cub the sticks had cubs the sticks pride and those cubs were immediately killed when the birmingham boys took over this area i think that they will be fine though we probably won't see a complete 100% survival rate i don't think that all 16 will survive to adulthood but you never know <laughs> little bundles of fluff One's still determinedly hanging on to mum and suckling away. Or just having a nap. Having a clean and then having a nap. Oh, shame. You see the sort of constant involuntary kicking whenever they want to scratch. Mum's got a bit of an injury on her leg, puncture wound of some sort. Hey Justin, it's great to have you on board. Justin is a field guide like us and says that he loves watching this on his days off. I think it's a really nice way to spend a day off, get to see some different animals perhaps. I'm not sure where you work Justin, but also just to see a different environment as well. I know it's always incredibly refreshing. So it's great to have you Justin. Please feel free to shout any suggestions or answers or anything, perhaps things that you've seen in your guiding career that perhaps I haven't seen or James hasn't seen in whatever way 
The best way, and I find Justin will agree with me, no doubt, the best way of learning as a field guide is to spend as much time with as diverse a group of other guides as you possibly can. Because everybody has their own knowledge, their own little areas of interest and therefore of expertise. And it's such a wonderful thing to learn from. For example, Steph. Those of you, I know you are all incredibly fond of Steph. Steph has this knack for the small things. <coughs> These lion cubs have turned me very sappy. I think it's the amount of time that I've spent with them. Not often that you are privileged or one is privileged enough. I mean, sure, even Justin would, can attest to this. You know, if you've got a group of guests, you try and show them as much as possible. But for us, we've sort of got liberty to spend as long as we want with these animals and as often as we want to, provided we don't get in the way of any of the other vehicles.